I'm Ayush and welcome to my two part video series on introduction to Power BI. So uh, I made two videos uh, depending upon who you are. One is for report creators. So creators are basically people who create the report, right? They could be analysts, they could be developers, they could be data scientists, right? The other audience that I'm making uh, a video for are the consumers of reports. So consumers could be people like managers, leaders, uh, CEOs, etc. So the reason I've done this is because uh, Power BI comes with a lot of features and depending on who you are, you don't need to know everything that is happening out there, right? So splitting this video into two parts uh, for the relevant audience makes sense. So let's go. So Power BI is a hot new application from Microsoft. Right? You can do, it is used for uh, business intelligence. It is used for data analysis. It is used for data visualization. You can go from raw data. You can transform your data in it. You can visualize your data and finally take business decisions uh, using those visualizations, right? So Power BI is similar to apps like Tableau, Google Data Studio, Click, SAS, Visual Analytics, and others, right? You can, uh, so in terms of popularity, let's explore how Power BI is growing. So when we compare Tableau with Power BI, uh, we can see that, you know, both, both of them have grown over the last two years, but uh, Power BI is catching up pretty fast. It has nearly doubled in its popularity. One thing that makes Power BI is so unique and so important to learn is that it is uh, backed by a very strong corporation, Microsoft, and it has access to all the Microsoft uh, ecosystem, right? So yeah, so let's go ahead. Power BI comes in three different apps, but uh, you don't need to download all the three apps. You just, uh, uh, so, like for creating reports, uh, you need to start with the Power BI desktop app. Desktop app. Right? Desktop app is used for creating the reports. It has, it is made for creating the reports. It has every option for you know customizing your data and uh, generating data visuals. Once you have made a report uh, on the desktop app, you publish it to your Power BI service account, which is accessed on a browser. Right. So this report gets uploaded to a Power BI service account. You can access the report uh, online. You can also modify and make changes as you could as you could uh, in a desktop app. Plus, you can share your reports with others using this Power BI service. Right. You can also uh, access the reports using the Power BI mobile app. Uh, but you cannot modify uh, your reports using the mobile app right now. Right. So if you're a creator, you would need uh, the Power BI desktop app and the Power BI service account, obviously. Uh, if you're a manager or a consumer, you'd probably need a service account, Power BI service account. And uh, depending on how you consume the reports, probably a mobile app also. Right. So before starting, I highly recommend you sign up for Power BI, uh, free, your free Power BI service account. Plus, download uh, the desktop app if you're creating a report, right? Uh, I'll be assuming that you're a creator of reports, right? Uh, and uh, so I'll be introducing you to the Power BI desktop app. So once you download the Power BI desktop app and open it for the first time, right? So this is the kind of a screen you are created with. So it shows you uh, your decent files, it, uh, you can get your data directly from here. You can also view some of the tutorials on Power BI, right, and other news and information over here, right. So we'll just cross it over here. And uh, so, yeah, so this is the, you know, work area. This is your work area in Power BI. There are a lot of options over here. Probably it may say it may seem intimidating at first, but you know I'll I'll take you through this and uh, I'll take you how everything works in this. Meanwhile, so this is a blank report, right? 
So I'll show you how a, a completed report looks like in Power BI. This one, this is a report I had made earlier. Uh, this is some kind of a social media analysis report for Instagram accounts, right? Uh, things over use the things you see over here are visuals, different kind of visuals, uh, charts, graphs, uh, KPI cards, and all, right? You can use them in your reports, and you you can have multiple tabs within your Power BI desktop reports. And so yeah, so this is a basic introduction of uh, your Power BI desktop app, and this is how your uh, reports look like in. Power BI Desktop app, right? So now I'll take you through the features, and we'll uh, uh, generate a report step by step on our own, right? So let's go. Power BI helps you go from uh, raw data to visualizations, right? And uh, it has features to do everything in between, right? So what you see over here is the desktop app, and in the desktop app, this blank area is called the canvas area or it, it is your working area, right? Uh, on the top, you see uh, several different tabs for different kind of options that are available in Power BI. Some of, them, some of the options become available when uh, there's data loaded into the file and uh, there's something to work with. On the right-hand side, you see uh, sections for visualizations. You can select different kinds of visualizations, let's say a stack bar chart or a clustered column chart, a scatter plot, or perhaps a pie chart. Right, there are, there's also different kinds of maps over here. Uh, filters, you can have filters, you can have tables, matrices. You can even have R scripts and Python scripts within Power BI. Right, so this is a very cool feature available, uh, uh, which is not available in other kind of uh, BI applications, right? Below this, uh, you have a section for uh, applying filters and a section for drill through. We'll perhaps use this later on in our, in our, in our report. And one other option is there for fields. When you have lo uh, loaded data sets into this file, You'll see all your data sets over here and all the columns which will which will be there in your file right so uh, so yeah so this is the uh, this is a like basic uh, introduction of the working area now let's try loading some sample data into the file right so the data I'll be loading into this file is a sample Instagram data for a post by a particular account. So this first column is the post URL or a part of the post URL. This column is the posting date time, the number of likes, the number of comments, and the hashtag used. So each row represents one post uh, of a particular account, right? So let's try importing this into our uh, Power BI working area. Now for that, I go to home and uh, we see an option over here called get data. So I click on that. It takes a bit, it's a bit time consuming process. Yeah. So now we get an option, a window for uh, getting data from different kinds of sources. There are a lot of options available in Power BI, a uh, very extensive list of data sources which we can connect to, right? So file data sources from Excel files, text CSVs, JSON, XML, even PDF, a different list of databases. Almost everything is there, right? Power BI datasets, Azure, especially for Microsoft. It's, it's, a, it's a very well connected ecosystem for Microsoft uh, databases and all. Online services, right? Some of the notable ones are Google Analytics, uh, Adobe Analytics, uh, Facebook, GitHub, Mailchimp, and uh, what else? Yeah. And other things like R scripts, Python scripts, and some other third party characters, right? 
but our data is in CSV format. So we just select text or CSV and click on connect. I will get this uh, option to select where our file is. I will quickly go to wrong folder. So this is where my file is. It is called postuser.csv. Now we get a, a preview window for a loaded data set. Okay, you can see how your data will look like uh, when it is loaded into Power BI. And we can directly load the data into Power BI or we can try and uh, adjust the formats of our data and you know, add ETL steps. So I'll click on edit. I'll not directly load the data. So we get a new window and this is called the Power Query Editor window. This is a very important window in Power BI. This is where uh, you'll be able to modify your data sets, loaded data sets, right? Uh, so this is basically the ETL window within your Power BI. A list of your data set will appear on the left hand side. A list of the applied steps for the selected data set will appear over here. So you can apply reversible steps to your data sets to transform them in any way you want, right? So this is a very cool feature in Power BI and uh, it makes ensures that you know uh, your data doesn't get changed or if there, there are changes uh, they are reversible right so I just check quickly check what kind of a data is loaded because sometimes you know uh, uh, it may not get loaded correctly so for example uh, I'll need to make some changes in this data and I'll show you how so I don't need this first column which is basically the number or serial number kind of a thing. So I'll just go to this option and click on remove columns. You see a step is added over here. Every change I make will get added as a step over here, right? So my post URL column is correct. It shows the same correct format for text. This is simple for text format. Posting date time has been recognized correctly as a date time column, okay likes is correctly recognized as a num number even number of comments is appearing correctly as a number format and my hashtag list is coming as a text list text format list right so the rest of my data looks good so now what i'll do is i'll click on close and apply so this will apply the changes to my transform data and load the data set into my power bi file right so in this in this video before clicking on closing and apply uh, in sorry window uh, you can see other options over here which you can uh, use to modify your data you can connect to new data sources and load it over here you can refresh the preview you can add or remove columns you can add or remove rows you can split your data you can change the data types you can even group by several columns or other criteria right so th there are other tabs even more tabs for transforming your data right a uh, lot of them are self-explanatory you can pivot or unpivot your columns you can uh, apply mathematical functions you can apply date time functions you can apply script functions you can add calculated columns or uh, you know dynamic columns within Power BI. It's a very powerful feature, and uh, probably you know in creating advanced reports, this is something that you'll use a lot. And uh, yeah, basic date time functions and all are there. Uh, yeah, so that is it all. You know what you can do in transformation or ETL steps within Power BI. I can close and apply. 
it will apply the changes and return back to my workspace area. So yes, my changes have been applied and I should see my data set over here. There it is. Right, so post user data set has been loaded and it is appearing in the fields section. All my columns are over here. Now I can start making my reports. Right. Uh, I would like to tell you so about some, some more options that are available within Power BI. Right? Now that we have loaded our data, we can have a look at the new tabs we have over here. So right now what you what you're viewing is the report tab. You make all the reports, you make all the changes in your uh, visuals and all. This over here is the data tab. It will list down all the loaded data sets after you have applied your queries. Right. So right now we have only have the posts user data, uh, table. So that is what is showing over here. You can also filter out things and you know, uh, subset the data to see what's happening within data. Right, you cannot make change, changes over here. If you have to make uh, changes to your data, you'll have to go to the Power Query Editor again. And you can do that by going, uh, by clicking on this Edit Queries option. Right. This over here is the Model tab. It will also show all the tables loaded uh, within your uh, file. But uh, you can create relationships over here. This is basically for creating relationships within your data. So right now we have only have one table, but you know, when, when you have a lot of tables and uh, tables which have data interconnected between them uh, using primary keys, primary keys and foreign keys. So uh, this is the area where, you know, you can actually create or identify, identify relationships between those fields, right? So you can just drag and drop a column from one table to another and it will automatically create a relationship between uh, those columns. It can also, it, it can also auto recognize relationships between your columns. But, uh, you know, uh, we'll try doing that uh, in a later video. So right now, uh, back to the report tab again, one more thing is that uh, on the top uh, bar over here, there's an option called refresh, right? So this is used when you want to fetch latest data from your data source. So let's say if I add some more rows to my source data in the CSV that, that I uh, imported, if I add some more rows into this post user CSV file, I can press refresh and it will automatically fetch the new rows and add it to our data automatically. Uh, so yeah, what else? The options, other options are, uh, I think, pretty self-explanatory. You can add several elements within your report. You can change themes, right? And uh, you can also have a phone layout over here, used for creating the Power Pay mobile reports. You can adjust the layout from here. And uh, some more options we have discussed before, right? So let's try making sample visuals uh, over here. Instagram data that I've loaded into Power BI. I want to see several basic uh, metrics like, you know, uh, how I post, how that per, how that account posts on its account, Instagram account. Uh, what are the average number of likes on a post? What are the average number of comments on a post? and uh, you know things like these so let's try creating those so in the visualization panel we have several options first i would like to see uh, you know how get an overview of how uh, frequently a person is posting on their instagram account right so what i'll do is i'll create uh, some kind of a trend chart uh, i could probably use the star column chart or line and stack column chart. So I'll go over this because I want to include several elements on a single chart. Simply click on it. 
this blank visual appears over here. I'll just adjust the size. Right, it's big enough. And uh, simply drag and drop one the date onto it. So you see date appears over here and it has Power BI has auto created hierarchies uh, within our dates, right? It has split it into year, quarter, month, and day. I don't need the quarter, so I'll just cross it off. I can keep the other hierarchy elements. Next I need is the post URL for counting how many posts are being made. I also drag and drop over this. So it picks it up, it places it, in, it in, into the column series. So, but nothing is coming over here, right? That is because it is taking it as a category and not, not counting the number of posts. So I'll click on this little arrow, uh, little arrow over here. Oh, sorry. Oh, I think uh, we need to shift it to the column values. Yeah. Yeah, now it is counting. Right. So you can see it has uh, chosen the option to count the number of post URLs, right? So now in this chart, we can see that uh, on the X axis, we have 2018. And on the Y axis, we have the count of posts, right? So in 2018, we had almost 2000, uh, almost 25 posts uh, by this account. But uh, this, this is not giving us the uh, complete picture. We need to probably, uh, you know, we want to see it by month and by day, right? For that, uh, we have the hierarchies already created. We just need to drill down into the details. And we can do that by using this expand option. I click on this. Now it expands one level down into the months. Right. So now we can see these posts were only for November and December. If I expand one more level, now it has gone to the lowest level. That is the day level. Right. Now we can see how many posts are being made per day. So some days it is two posts and most of the days it is only one post right now in this chart i think uh, i also want to see uh, perhaps the number of likes i got in each post right so since this is a stat column and line chart so we we'll place the number of likes on the line axis right so we we'll place the drag the lines likes into the line values uh, metric area. Now we can see the line chart, uh, you know, superimposed on this uh, posting frequency. So on the on this first axis, first y axis, we have the number of posts. On the second y axis, we have the number of likes per post. And you can see, you know, how the likes are going up or down based on the post. One more thing, perhaps, to, some more things that I want to see is uh, the number of average likes that I get on my account or the number of comments on my account. So I'll use a different met different kind of a visual for that. That is called the card metric or the KPI metric. So create click on it to create a blank metric and I simply drag the number of likes onto this. So right now it is showing 7668 but if you see over here it is showing a sum of the total likes we don't want the sum we just want the average right so now this is showing the average number of likes we have per post so similarly i want the same metric for comment so what i'll do is i'll just simply copy and paste using ctrl c and ctrl v drag a different to a different position and instead of likes i'll drag the comment column in this field right and again, instead of sum, I'll take the average. So 6.88 is the average number of comments I'm getting. Uh, one last thing that I want to see is probably uh, filter out uh, data based on my date, right? So for that, we have a slice of visual. I click on it and drag the date into this slice of visual, right? So now it gives me an option to choose the starting and the ending dates over here or I can drag the bars 
to you know adjust the date range now you can see data coming for a limited dates only right so let's say uh, i want to see data for only f from 1st november to be between 1st and 30th november right so this is my november data filtered out right all the filters all the visuals get uh, synced to the slicer even my average number of likes and my average number of comments will show uh, data only for november right so this is the basic uh, dashboard we have quickly created in power bi just to give you an example of just show you how easy it is to create start creating reports in power bi now our next step will be publishing the reports into our power bi power bi service account and we can later view the the same report on a browser uh, using our account right so let's do that this report with others or view it online or view it on a mobile you need to publish a report using this publish option over here right so we click on it and it will ask you which workspace you want to save this file to so the default workspace is my workspace click on select over here and just publishing this report to uh, power bi service account right so this took a very less time because this file is very small you may perhaps need to save your file first before doing this locally uh, the local copy of this desktop file gets saved as a .pbix file right and the same file will get published online so we'll click on open working file .pbix here or we can go to directly a power bi service account right i'll not click over here i'll go to my account directly so this is my power bi service account it can be accessed using app.powerbi.com slash home you can log in using the account you have created and you'll be greeted by this window you see over here right so uh, now we need to find a report our report was uh, in, published in my workspace using this workspace option. I go to my workspace and you see uh, the sub tabs for dashboards, reports, workbooks, and data sets. Right? So a report is appearing over here, the same file we created. And uh, in the data sets, you'll see the data set for the working file that you have created. So basically, the same uh, posts user data set is loaded into your Power BI service account. We'll go to report and click on working file. It will take a bit to load, but now you see the same file loaded over here on the browser, right? So, this is what publishing report does. So now it is on your Power BI service account and uh, you have the same options you see on the desktop app. You can edit your reports using the Power BI service account, uh, the online, this online uh, service portal, right? And there are also a lot more op options uh, for sharing and viewing the reports. Uh, let me give you a quick uh, tour of the options you have can download the reports uh, download the reports publish to web if you uh, you know want to share it with everyone on the internet you can export it to powerpoint export it to pdf uh, download a copy of the local file what else uh, yeah let me see some other options you can subscribe to changes in this report but i think you need a license for that so we'll ignore this and uh, you can share your reports i think this is the most important feature uh, you know the last feature probably after you have created a report you need to share a report with your managers or leaders and all so this is how you can share a report and uh, for this also you need to have a power bi uh, pro license you know uh, you need to have the license the person you're sharing with 
needs to have a license right uh, one workaround like uh, if you want to share a file you can share either the .pbix file for free but uh, both of you need to have the Power BI desktop app if you want to share this only this version the online Power BI service version you need to take a license right and uh, yeah I think rest of the options are self-explanatory so yeah this is the basic uh, way you know as an analyst you can create uh, Power BI reports we've gone from importing raw data transforming the data creating visuals and finally loading the file the report into our Power BI service account and uh, you know we have options to share the report or subscribe to changes so yeah this is how you go about uh, you know creating a report from scratch in Power BI I hope you found this useful as a introduction to Power BI right? and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to you know receive updates in the future and I'll see you soon goodbye